Are you interested in learning how construction projects come together? Well, 30 of my VIP students are getting a tour of our recent eight unit new build right here in Toronto. I'm taking them around the building, answering any questions they have about what's going on with this project and all of our future projects. Check it out. The way that this is designed is uh, when somebody comes out of their unit door here, they have two options. So they can go to this staircase or they can go to that staircase. And that's a code requirement in case there was a fire in this staircase, they have a secondary means to get out of the building, which is the other staircase. Uh, in a lot of our other buildings, we use what's called a scissor staircase. So they kind of pass each other so you can do that with one staircase but there's kind of like one going up and one going down at the same time um, it takes up a little bit less room um, so i do like the scissor staircase but um, because of the, the the way that this was designed that's why they did the two separate staircases so on the main floor you may or may not have noticed but there's basically three doors on the main floor there's the one that you can come into the building that's like the center door and there there's a door on either side which is the bottom of these two staircases. So, um, and then you were, uh, there's a couple of people asking about the, the basement. That's why there's those two massive holes there. That's the staircase uh, going to and from the basement, but it's the same way. So those staircases carry all the way up through the house. There was an elevator in the original design of this building uh, that we took out. Um, I just didn't see that it was necessary. It's an extra cost uh, on a three-story walk-up. Um, you know, it's going to be probably $50,000, $70,000 to install the elevator. And also then you've got the, you know, the inspections and the maintenance and everything like that. For a building of this size and scope, I just didn't see it as being necessary. So we took it out. We captured that space for, you know, interior square footage and the utility room. Um, but yeah, that was the, on the original plans. So just, just so you know, as well, the, the, um, you know, we, we changed consultants uh, when we picked up this project. It was designed by someone and they had gone through the, there was actually three architects on this project. First one that they took them through site plan approval. Uh, then for whatever the previous owners, they switched to someone else to take them through the building permit process. And then when we came in, um, based on the recommendation of the construction manager, they didn't feel like they had the knowledge. They actually weren't even architects. They were BCIN compliant for drawings, but they actually had to get another architect to sign off on all of the changes. So we let them go and then we brought in our own consultant to basically make the necessary changes. So this one went through uh, a lot of value engineering. So when our construction managers came in, and this is one of the benefits of working with a construction manager, they looked at all the plans and said, uh, how, do we reduce, how do we reduce costs and scope, right? How do we make the, the timelines faster and make the build less money. And so they were able to um, find ways, basically that entire wall was supposed to be uh, what's called cold form steel, which is basically structural steel. Um, but we checked the building code, we checked with the examiners, we said, why is it built out of cold form steel? They said, it doesn't need to be. He said, great, let's change it to wood but this project was kind of designed during the pandemic and at the time steel and wood were almost the same price but since then wood has come down drastically so we were able to make that change there was a bunch of steel that was in the building that we were able to eliminate and change some load-bearing walls move things around uh, basically eliminating a ton of steel from this project which is expensive and that's also very difficult to get steel on site you would have had to have a crane block off dufferin which is like a nightmare in itself um, so that's the, the the benefit of working with you know a construction manager or somebody that really knows the ins and outs of, of these kinds of projects um, so that's that's some of the stuff that we did here uh, we you know i think uh, i'm trying to think of some of the other things that we did uh, to reduce our, our costs. Oh, they had spec simple things like aluminum windows. I was like, do we need aluminum? They're like, no, okay, vinyl, perfect, let's go. You know, just stuff like that, right? So you really wanna be paying attention to those things uh, if, you're, if you're budget conscious. Uh, you want your product to last a long time. You want it to be quality, obviously, but if you can make those changes uh, and you are, you know, needing to cut some of your costs, you definitely wanna to do those kinds of things.
uh, standard openings, for instance, like window openings. Architects will design a building that is beautiful, but it's not necessarily economical to build it, right? So you can push back on all those kinds of things and say like, hey, make the standard, you know, make the openings standard, five feet, you know, six feet, whatever those openings are versus, you know, these random widths and heights. I think the, they actually had them as full height, you know, windows uh, and doors and they're crazy, they're custom, they're expensive, everything like that. So when you're looking at your buildings, um, just know that sometimes it makes more sense to pay the architect to make the change than it does to try to pay the trade contractor to make the change because that, that gets really expensive. In regards to controlling costs and things of that nature, what did you decide to go with uh, for finishes for this project? Yeah, so finishes on all of our projects are becoming almost standardized. Uh, we use luxury vinyl plank for flooring um we'd go with pretty basic cabinet um stuff white is our color of choice usually unless we're doing some sort of upgrade we do like solid surface for countertops so we go we go with quartz um we use pretty standard doors and trim uh right now black is obviously in so we're we're using all of our fixtures and shower things and everything are black I don't know if you saw it on the main floor, but there's those two big tubs that are there. I really like those units. They're a one piece tub shower combo and they're obviously acrylic. And so they don't leak. There's no joints in them at all, but they're a pain in the ass to get into your projects. So you have to get them here early because they basically have to go in as the framing's happening because if they come in after, they're really hard to maneuver into the site. So um, I really like those we're using. I think we have nine bathrooms in here and there's only one shower and everything else is those one piece tubs, right? So those are only a thousand bucks and that's basically, you don't need a tile person. You just need your plumber to get them in there and everything else is drywall around them. So they're like really economical and they look good forever. They last a long time. They're easy to repair if, you know, if there's a chip in them or anything like that. So those kinds of things we use. On the stairs, we like to use uh, the vinyl stairs as well. So we do the vinyl uh, treads and risers. So they kind of match all the other flooring and they're very durable. Um, with the railings and things like that, we, had, um, we use basically aluminum, steel and glass for all of our exterior railings. Um, but yeah, that's our standard kind of finish package. Uh, is it flat roof all the way to the street or is there like for our technical interest to peek at the front or anything? No, there's not. It's a flat roof. Uh, it's got uh, four scuppers. Uh, scuppers are what uh, drains the water. So everything slopes this way and then slopes to the various uh, scuppers. But it's uh, I think it's only a two degree slope. So yeah, it's pretty, pretty. You can kind of see it in the framing up there. You'll see how they've uh, cut everything sloping in that direction. But yeah, and then we just have the one skylight here and that's it. So with a flat roof like this, um, the challenge with flat roofing is you got to make sure that you have all your penetrations figured out. So you got to coordinate with all of your trades before the roof goes on because you have to say like, hey, do you need anything going through the roof? Because now is the time you got to let us know because you don't have to put that stuff in after because it voids the warranty for the roof and all this kind of stuff. So that's where the construction managers really come in as well because they'll coordinate all those trades to be like, you know, what do you need? What are your you know penetrations? Get it all sorted out so that they can do that while the roofers are here. So this project did go through site plan approval because it was prior to Bill 23. So we are mandated by the site plan. We're, we're bound to the site plan approval. So we're brick on this, that's three different materials on this side and like four on this side. So we've got aluminum, I think. On the front, we've got hardy plank, we've got hardy panel, we've got brick. We've got all kinds of crazy expensive shit on this project that I would not have put in on mine if I had the choice. So we had to bring in on this project, bringing in a two inch water line and the cost of that with the two inch water line uh, and two sewers. That is not done again. Uh, so six inch sewer and six inch storm. So that's another thing that you avoid without having to go to site plan approval. You do not have to bring in a storm sewer. But when you go through site plan approval, they say we want storm coming in and sewer. So the bill from the city of Toronto for two inch water line and two six inch sewer and, and storm was 130 grand. And that's not something that you get to choose whether you want to do it or not. And they give you the bill and say, this is what you owe us. And you say, can we get this priced from somebody else? And they say, nope. <laughs> Who's paying for this stuff? Exactly. Yeah. So um, that is a requirement basically on a new build. You have to bring in new water and sewer.
So you're about 180,000 just to get water and sewer into the building. Are you doing separate meters for each unit? We're gonna do separate electrical. We might sub-meter the water. If you're doing a project and you wanna have sub-metering on your projects, there's lots of companies actually that now will come in and they'll install all of your sub-metering for you and then your utilities all flow through them. So right now you can have something like, obviously with our electric, we would have Toronto Hydro. And then with water, we would have City of Toronto. But you can have somebody come in and, and they can sub-meter everything. And then your tenants would basically pay the sub-metering company. Um, and that would be something that you could pass on to, to your tenants. This is an amazing build. Thank you, yeah, it's, it's coming along. Really good. I hope you enjoy this video, and if you're interested in learning how you can be a part of a development project like this, check out my website, darrenvoros.com, for information about my upcoming courses and everything to do with the development. You can follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on Tuesday.